a studio display, an overpriced, underperforming monitor, or a great display to meet your needs? Let's find out. Presenting the Tech I Hound with Don Bullock. Hi there, and welcome to the Tech I Hound. I'm Don. A few years ago, my 2014 iMac just wasn't making it as far as editing video was concerned. I kept seeing that beach ball way too much and I was running out of memory. So my wife and I decided to save up for a new computer. And then about that time, WWDC in 2020, suddenly Apple announces that they're going to ditch Intel processors and go to Apple Silicon. Because today is the day we're announcing that the Mac is transitioning to our own Apple Silicon. So I knew I had to wait for the Apple Silicon before I could buy a computer. When the 24-inch iMac came out, I thought, I really like my 27-inch, so I'm going to hold out and see what they do. And of course, when the studio came out, that was great. So I have a Mac Studio Max, and of course I needed a display. So in the same keynote, they introduced the Studio Display, and I bought one, and I've really been happy with it. So this is a review of that Studio Display, and what I want you to do to watch it and decide for yourself. I can't tell you that the Studio Display is best for you. All I can do is tell you as much as I can about it and what my experience is with it and how it compares to my iMac. First of all, this is a review of the Apple Studio Display, not an advertisement or a typical YouTube clickbait critique. I'm giving my honest opinion after using it in my normal routine. In the review, I will also do some comparisons between the Studio Display and my late 2014 27-inch Retina Display 5K iMac. The Studio Display is the first Apple display other than the high-priced Pro Display XDR since Apple's Thunderbolt Display, which was discontinued on June 23, 2016. It ended Apple's production of standalone displays for quite a while. We can safely say that the Studio Display is a monitor that won't be replaced anytime soon, though it's possible that Apple might make some improvements in the years to come. Because of that, this review should be very helpful for those who are considering an Apple monitor for their Macs or even iPads. For me, a monitor is very important, might even be more important than the computer, because I stare at it for hours on end when I'm editing video or photos. So I have to have a good monitor. A good monitor should last longer than maybe one or two computers. Even if Apple came out with something better than the studio display, I could use it as a second monitor. First of all, let's get the design and construction of the studio display out of the way. I don't know of any competitive monitors on the market that have all aluminum or metal construction. All the others, as far as I know, are made from plastic. Apple has carried that over from the IMAX and the Pro Display XDR. The stand is also made from solid aluminum. The tilting stand that comes with it is very much like the one that's on my iMac. The height adjustable stand is an extra $400. There's also an optional vase mount. I think the lack of choice of stand type after purchase, the extra cost for the height adjustable stand, and the fact that consumers can't swap out different stand choices without having it done at an Apple store, which according to some reports I read costs $119. This is one area where Apple failed. Fortunately for me, I'm happy with the tilting stand that I have. It's just like the one on my iMac. Now on to the important part, the display. The studio display is a 5K monitor. Most of us think of K as meaning a thousand. That's not what it means when we talk about the resolution of a monitor. That's much different. Perhaps if I graph it out, you'll understand the difference between 4K and 5K resolution in a monitor. We'll start with 1440p. It's 3,700,000 pixels. Now we'll compare that to 4K. That's 8,300,000 pixels. Now on to 5K. 
It's 14,700,000 pixels. Obviously, there's a huge jump between all of these in the number of pixels. The screen size for the studio display is 27 inches. And as shown on the graph, that's 14.7 million pixels. That translates to 218 pixels per inch, which Apple calls retina. For retina, the individual pixels have to be so small that they cannot be seen at a normal distance from the monitor. That's the best PPI for Mac OS. Now on to one of the things that I really like about the studio display and one reason that I bought one, color. It displays 1 billion colors and P3 wide color. While some claim that this is the same panel as previous iMacs, the studio display adds an extra 100 nits, which gives it up to 600 nits of brightness. The display also includes True Tone that makes images appear more natural. As the name implies, the studio display was certainly designed to go into studios. It was not meant for the average Apple user. Now to what many seem to seek these days, thin bezels and the removal of the chin of an iMac. I'm thinking thin. She's thinking thin. <laughs> the bezels on my iMac are a little less than one inch wide, plus about two and a half inches for the chin. I'm not sure what the advertised size was. I have to add that unlike many who review computer monitors, I've never sat at any computer thinking the bezels should be narrower. And the chin was fine as far as I was concerned. The bezels on the studio display are about a half an inch wide, including the one on the bottom. Do they look better? Sure. But it's not something I sit around and think about when I'm using the display. There are a lot of other things that are far more important to me than bezel width and a chin. But I know there's still a lot out there that would like to have them thinner. Maybe they just don't want any bezels at all. But there's some that wouldn't even be happy with that. They're not happy with anything. For an extra $500, Apple does offer glass with what they call a nano texture finish. To find out more about this, I consulted an article from Apple Insider. Really, the nano texture finish is an option for specific users working in specific circumstances, particularly those in environments with challenging lighting conditions who can't afford the distraction of glare or reflectivity on their screen. For the average user, controlling glare and reflectivity isn't too much of a concern, but nano texture finish is an excellent option for professionals who don't or can't work in an office with controlled lighting. I've also heard that the nano texture is difficult to clean. Now remember, as I do this review, I'm most interested in photo and video editing, and that's what I use the display for. You may use it for other reasons. Editing, music, effects. Most important to me is the quality of photos and video I get on a computer monitor because I edit a lot of photos and video clips. I wanted a monitor with color accuracy and sharpness. With the studio display, that's what I got. This screenshot of a professional win photo of our girl Emmy is a good example. Notice the crisp text and the brilliant true colors. Oh, <laughs> and obviously I added the name and Basset Hound Emmy statue. This was a photo I added to my various social media accounts. Oh, you're a show dog? This is another professional photo of our girl Emmy at a dog show. It's a screenshot from my studio display. Now watch carefully as I switch over to a screenshot from the iMac. Did you see any changes here? I certainly didn't. Now let's look at both of those side by side. Everything looks the same even on my studio display monitor. Now let's add in a screenshot from my iPhone 11. I'm still not seeing any differences in these photos. To add to the mix, here's a screenshot from my iPad Pro 5th generation. Yeah, that's the brand new one, folks. With mini LED. This is one reason that many professional photographers and those that create art on the computer love the Apple system because everything looks the same. No matter which Apple device they use to create or edit their work, it's going to look the same on all other Apple devices. They like the resolution, brightness, accuracy, and consistency. They all look exactly the same to me.
The studio display offers presets for different uses. There are nine different reference modes that provide calibrations for specific uses or custom presets are also available, plus some fine tuning options that some creators find helpful. The display also has the choice of True Tone technology. There are two resolution choices. Brightness can be adjusted up to 600 nits. When browsing my photo gallery, I was immediately struck by the bold hues and staggering amount of detail I could make out. The studio display remained impressively bright and viewable throughout my testing time, and I didn't notice any glare on its glass display. That's partly due to where my office space is and my lighting, but there's absolutely nothing special about either one. Speaking of photo editing, this is what I do a lot. I took this photo of a litter of puppies that included this puppy in a bed. So that section needs to be cropped and blown up. So here's what that photo looks like when I blow it up to full screen size. You can see here the brilliant colors and the dark blacks and the beautiful white whites. Now this is a screenshot of that same photo on the studio display. You can still see the beautiful colors and the dark blacks and the bright whites. While this may not be the best example for showing this quality of the studio display when it comes to photo editing, it should give you some kind of an idea. Many have complained that the studio display has no ProMotion, no Mini LED, and no HDR. I'll address those briefly here. No HDR. The studio display does not have the required local dimming for HDR nor enough brightness or contrast. Though the studio display isn't technically an HDR screen, it can still take advantage of the wider color range from HDR streams. No Mini LED. Currently, there isn't a 27-inch Mini LED panel available. No ProMotion. According to the reports I've seen, ProMotion on a 5K 27-inch monitor is not possible through one Thunderbolt wire or port. Unlike many monitors that are on the market today, the studio display does have some excellent audio, at least as far as the speakers are concerned. There's also a microphone array and a webcam. The six speaker sound system on the studio display is far better than the speakers on my iMac. They can fill my room with rich, booming audio for movies and music alike. I have to admit, however, for most tasks, especially editing video and watching YouTube, I use headphones. Here's a comparison of the studio display and my iMac. They were recorded under the same conditions. The studio display has an improved microphone when compared to the iMac. It has a three mic array while there's just one microphone on the iMac. The studio display microphones are very crisp sounding and adequate for things like FaceTime or Zoom calls. You may have seen my YouTube review of the webcam when I compared the built-in microphone with my Blue Yeti. I'll do a comparison here of all three microphones. This is the microphone and webcam for my late 2014 iMac. This is a test of the microphone and the webcam on the studio display. This is a test of the Blue Yeti microphone and the webcam on the studio display. Though it's good, the connectivity on the studio display is rather limited. The studio display has four ports. One Thunderbolt 3. The Thunderbolt 3 port has 96 watts, so it can charge a laptop. And three USB-C. These are 10 gigabyte ports. While some would love to see more and faster ports, that would require more I.O. controllers and extra costs. At this point, I'm only using the Thunderbolt port to hook up my computer to the monitor. I'm not using the USB-C ports yet, so for me, I don't need any extra ports right now. Connecting a computer to the studio display is just as easy as it looks. 
One end of the included Thunderbolt cable goes into the Thunderbolt port on the studio display, and the other end goes into a Thunderbolt port on the back of your computer. In this case, it's the Mac Studio Max. Neural connections complete. You may have noticed at the beginning when I showed the unboxing of the studio display that the power cord comes attached to the display. This drew a lot of complaints from reviewers. Because the studio display is so thin, Apple had to come up with a totally different connection for the power cord. Due to the rather delicate nature of this plug system, they decided that the consumer should not remove them. They even came up with a special device to remove the plugs at the Apple stores. While this hasn't caused a problem for me, it's just important for you to know, especially if you're in a situation where your monitor is moved around a lot. Good monitor. And now for the elephant in the room, the webcam. The webcam on the studio display is a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. According to iFixit, the built in webcam on the studio display is pretty much identical to the iPhone 11's 12 megapixel selfie camera. The webcam on the studio display has been well documented. Along with many others, I've produced two videos about the webcam on the studio display, so I'm not going to say much more about it here except to watch the videos. In this video, I cover what must have really happened at Apple and the fact that the studio display webcam still isn't fixed, but hopefully Apple will fix it. Then this video is a full review of the webcam after Apple did their first fix. It's one of those where you can draw your own conclusions as to what the webcam really looks like now. Now let's take a look at the insides of the studio display to see what powers all of this stuff. First of all, we have a large split internal power supply. Next, we have twin fans that cools everything down. Webcam and microphones are up in the top. It has six speaker array. And this is the motherboard. The studio display is obviously over engineered for a monitor. The studio display is powered by an A13 Bionic chip. The Apple A13 Bionic is a 64 bit ARM based system on a chip designed by Apple Incorporated. It appears on the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max, 9th generation iPad, the iPhone SE, second generation, and the studio display. The the chip features a 64-bit, 6-core CPU. Along with the CPU, the A13 integrates a 4-core GPU and an 8-core neural engine. It's the first chip made by TSMC on their second generation 7 nanometer N7 Pro process and contains 8.5 billion transistors. Wow, it's really powerful. In addition to all that, according to this article from The Verge, the Apple Studio Display has 64 gigabytes of storage. I personally don't know of any other monitor that has a, literally a computer chip inside, nor all that storage. For now, the chip controls Hey Siri, the camera, microphone array, and speakers, which includes spatial audio. We know already that the studio display can be updated through an iOS update. What they have planned for in the future, we don't know. It will be interesting to see what Apple does in the future with all the power in this computer monitor. iFixit did an interesting experiment. They took the screen off a studio display and the 24-inch iMac. They asked people in their office to say which one was the studio display and which one was a full-fledged computer. The results of their experiment was pretty much 50-50. About half thought the studio display was the computer and the other half thought the M1 24-inch iMac was the computer. The studio display works well with the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, and, of course, the Mac Studio. This is a list of Apple devices that the Studio Display is compatible with. Yes, it might work with other computers, but remember that the only way to control the Studio Display as far as brightness and other features is to use an Apple device. Obviously, Apple didn't intend the Studio Display to be used with older devices or Windows. But I don't do Windows. How much? 
The studio display is $15.99. At $15.99, the studio display is Apple's least expensive monitor, and the 5K 218 PPI makes it perfect for Mac OS. But there are other choices out there, some less expensive, and I have a real surprise for you at the end. You need us to keep watching for this, especially those of you that think the studio display is overpriced for a professional monitor. According to Apple leaker Ming-Chi Kuo and the expert on monitors, Ross Young, a new mini LED monitor should be coming fairly soon. As this article in Macworld states, you might want to hold off for that. While this 27-inch mini LED monitor may be coming, it was supposed to come in June, but now may possibly arrive by October 2022, and now looks like it'll be delayed until early 2023. It's expected to be priced higher than the studio display. Some are thinking that the price may be double that of the studio display. I mean, that's a lot of money. Of course, if you really want the best monitor for an Apple, you need to go with the 6K Pro Display XDR, but obviously that's out of the budget for most of us. Oh, and for those of you who are wondering why this is a 6K monitor, not a 5K, it's because of the scaling. It's the same number of PPI as the studio display. And the price? $4,999 plus $999 for the stand. Of course, there's always the choice of the LG 27-inch 5K Ultrafine. You still have to give up the uh, aluminum construction of the studio display and some of the other qualities that the studio display has, but it is another choice. I understand it's rather flimsy, and of course, the construction is all plastic. And the price? The list price is $13.99.99, but I have seen some on sale for less. For more professional displays, you also could go with the BenQ 27 4K UHD monitor. This monitor is the least expensive of the BenQ line, but a lot of professionals like BenQ monitors. And the price? $599.99. Yes, you heard that. $599.99. But usually when professionals talk about BenQ, this is the model they're talking about. From what I understand, it's a true professional monitor. And the price for this one? $1,599.99. Yes, that's 99 cents more than the studio display. Perhaps we need to tell the detractors of the studio display more about the price of this monitor. In case you didn't notice, that expensive BenQ is still all plastic construction, and it's only 4K. So, is the studio display a good monitor for you? Let me know in the comments below. I'd like to hear from you. So, if you're interested in my video on the webcam, click over here. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can click on my logo that's over here. Thank you all very much for watching. Hi, sweetie. Well, that's Lexi, too. Hi, girls. How you doing? How you doing, huh? Are you good girls? Yeah, we're good girls. Oh, thank you for the kisses.